Hi, and welcome to another episode of Dawncast. My name is Kathy Ngo. And I'm Dai Lee. Today we have a very special guest, Mona Muhammad, who is the mother of six and the founder of a social enterprise called Community Support Services Incorporated, which helps vulnerable individuals from low social economic backgrounds within the Bankstown Canterbury region. That's in Sydney Southwest, by the way. Sydney Southwest. And Mona, I've heard so many fantastic things about you, and I'm surprised we haven't met because I'm actually originally from the, the Canterbury Bankstown area. So we're neighbours. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're neighbours. Yeah. Um, we're a little bit hard to find because we don't have uh, signage at the front yeah. and I'm uh, quite busy working in it rather than on it. So um, doing a lot of things with the community and, you know, driving a truck at times and pulling a trailer at times and doing other things with people. Well, I don't do a lot of uh, social media advertising and working on marketing and, and networking where I, I should be actually, you know, but um, yeah, there's so, so much to do in, in 24 hours. So, so you founded the Community Support Services Incorporated. So tell us, uh, how did it all start? Well, uh, it all started with um, uh a little group of people that we were helping a refu refugee uh, students and students who were disengaging from school. Uh, I used to be a high school teacher in, in another life. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> so I've got a, a vested interest in education. And I really wanted to help those kids who were falling through the cracks. So um, just a group of like-minded mums who felt... Um, uh, strongly about education uh, we got students just to to come uh, with the with our kids uh, on our kitchen table uh, helping them with their homework and depending on where we lived and where the other students lived and the capacity um, of how many kids can actually fit on the kitchen table so we divided the kids according to their demographic area and um yeah, so it all started from there and it used to be called Youth Educational Support Services Project, YEWS. And then um, I started dealing with the mums of those um, children and realised that, um, that these mum, the mums needed a lot of uh, support. So I found myself accidentally counselling them, um, supporting them whichever way I can. Um, referring them, uh, advocating on their behalf, and they connected really well with me. And you know, I, I sensed a, a, a duty of care to do something to help these women. And um, so, since then, it felt like the organic thing to do was to start CSS. So when when did you set this up? Uh, we volunteered for about four years and then um, we got registration in uh, January 2018. Wow. And, uh, and so Village Pantry is an initiative of that service? Yes, it is. So um, we do quite a lot of projects um, that under the umbrella of community support services. So as the name sounds, it's quite generic. It's quite you know, it's holistic, so we take the family as a whole. Um, we uh, try as much as possible to support um, the. Uh, it's not. It's not for a specific age group, and it's not for. Uh, a specific, it's non faith based. Um, it's not for an ethnic, a specific ethnic group. Everybody is welcome, and the basis of uh, uh, CSS is to try and revive the village values, the values of knowing um, your next door neighbour by their first name, uh, of just knocking on their door and, and, and sharing a cuppa and breaking some bread. Um, so I, I noticed that many people were disconnecting at a time where we felt we had all the means of connecting with each other, whether it's through social media or, you know, uh, emails and all these new ways of connecting with one another we were disconnecting at a you know at a rate an, an alarming rate that many people feel really lonely so um we we've got you know the art project where um we call it healing art where we do art artwork with um with for adults and and for children 
uh, regulating their emotions and connecting with, with one another as well. Um, we've got sewing, we've got about 25 sewing machines and we, we've we uh, three, the, this is a third cohort <clears throat> this year that's graduating. Um, it's a very simple and basic course, but it's also, uh, so they, they learned how to uh, thread a sewing machine and be acquainted with it and, um, and do basic uh, uh, sewing on it and uh, alterations, just really basic alterations and do the covers, you know, for the sewing machine and whatnot. But they also get to connect with each other and share a, share a plate from their culture for wherever they're from and quite very diverse and multicultural um, group. So, but it's been on pause since the COVID-19. Yeah, I But was they can ask. through a WhatsApp group, yeah. yeah. So are you delivering it online now? Like what's the model looking like at the moment? Well, they're not really, we're not really delivering online per se. A lot of uh, women are quite um, distressed and they've got children, so they're dealing with them at school and trying to do something. I wouldn't call it homeschooling, but it, it's facilitated learning uh, <laughs> because homeschooling is a different ball game altogether. However, um, it, we try and, and, you know, share videos. And so at the moment they were doing... Um, uh, cushions and, and that so uh, they're, they're discussing how you know what they've done with their cushions and putting videos and photos and some are doing some uh, face masks at home stuff like that. So what have been some of the challenges um, obviously your um, the work that we, you were doing through Village um, Pantry and, and the corporate um, the community uh, support services have been very much uh, connecting people bringing people together to create that sense of a village again. Um, what have you encountered now? Suddenly COVID-19 um, has obviously shifted your whole uh, operations, hasn't it? Yes, yes. So um, uh, the Village Pantry has been one of, one of the initiatives that we've been running and uh, it's been running five days a week. Um, we do have ample produce that we... Um, uh, we're affiliated with Second Bite uh, Food Bank and Food Works, and um, trying to coordinate pickup. Before they used to come to our space and do their shopping over here and choose what they want from from the pantry, but uh, after this uh, situation, we're we're basically operating behind closed doors, and we have to find ways, innovative ways to to serve those. Who are vulnerable and stop them from becoming more vulnerable. Uh, we've had an influx of people who need uh, produce and, and food and a, uh, a massive reduction in the number of volunteers um, due to the current situation. So it's become, you know, a real challenge uh, in that sense. So we uh, pack the, um, the hampers uh, and they're all ready and either through appointment slots they come and pick up uh, downstairs and it's a no contact thing um, so no, there's nobody uh, you know we just leave it for them they leave two dollars donation in return if they can afford it um, and we also have uh, some kind of delivery system where um, those who can't uh, come due to isolation or old age or uh, no access to a car. Um, there are some people who even don't have the money or petrol to um, uh, to come and pick up, you know. So, um, the, and, and due to quite a few big organisations around Bankstown that used to offer food services, uh, closing down during um, the last three weeks, um, it's... It, it meant that we used to get a lot more people that you know, used to re uh, rely on those other services. They they attend to us yeah, in, yeah, instead. Uh, we've even had referrals um, from far as as far as uh, Campbelltown and Minto, Granville and Marrickville. So um, you could appreciate the the pressure that we're under at the moment, understaffed. And when I mean staffed, we're running under volunteer capacity. So, so basically, for you, you get receiving a lot of. Are you now receiving food as well, and 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 it's sitting there, and 
you don't have the volunteers so now obviously now that this so there was a period of time where we weren't receiving food uh, because like people were panicking and they were buying everything so supermarkets weren't donating uh, much um the the bread isn't as much like we used to receive um 150 to 200 kilos of bread per day and we only do two pick up two stores two coal stores that we pick up from um now it's sort of the bread is pr about um half that amount and um and the produce has reduced but it's it's sort of picking up a bit um as uh, people are easing off and the limits per person uh, in the stores has improved and people are abiding by the laws. Um, so we do, we're starting to pick up and people are donating food. We uh, more or less need now people to donate their, either their service or um, uh, donate their time to help us with deliveries or coordinate perhaps you know there are a couple of things that you know, people can help us with we are we've got dgr status so we are tax deductible we are a registered charity so anything above two dollars is tax deductible they can donate a product or a service which is uh, which is also considered a donation in kind and that is tax deductible meaning uh, if there's a truck driver that normally charges um, thirty dollars an hour and he, they've given up three hours. Um, we can we can give them a receipt that they've um, uh, for, for that amount, to ninety dollars, and that ninety dollars can be uh, uh, considered as a donation and will be tax deductible. Um, also, we've, we're also with um, uh, registered with Service New South Wales as a work development order um, a provider. So anyone who's got a, a fine and is, is struggling with payment, um, they can come and volunteer their time as well and they don't have to pay it. So each right. hour that they volunteer with us um, gets deducted from their, um, from their uh, fine. Okay. Wow, that's something new. Yeah. That's, that's new. That's didn't know that. And also the truck driver thing and donating service for time. Like I didn't know that you, there's a, a way to do that. To donate, because yeah. like, I've always thought it was like money as a donation, but like this is fantastic. No, you, you can do a, a, a service in kind or even a product in kind. So it, let, let's say someone's got a fridge, which we need, all right? Someone's got a, um, they've, uh, in this current situation, a lot of people have opened cafes and they haven't worked out well and it's closed down. So it might cost X amount. Um, they can donate that fridge to us, you know. Uh, not many people are going to be buying that fridge because it, business is hard, right? Um, and they can put an X amount, whatever that uh, they were going to sell it for, and that would also be considered as a donation in kind. Mm. So I, that's, I, that's another option. I believe that because um, uh, our the, the Southwest Entrepreneurial Hub Initiative, which is part of Dawn, I believe you've been able to connect um, and, and got something out of that. Is that right? Well, we connected with someone who's got a cooler, a cool room, and we're working towards collaborating with each other uh, with the cooked food that we get. We um, we still haven't moved forward a little bit because of the Easter holidays, but uh, it seems like we we might be uh, starting to do something like that. But we're still in need of a, a refrigerated van or a truck. So if anyone's got one, yeah, anyone's because got one. of the cooked food <laughs> I don't have one. for deliveries, yeah. So anyone in the catering industry who's got a couple of hours free, able to do pick up of uh, cooked food because it's got to be chilled, um, um, you know, they can contact us at mona at cssvillage.org.au. Fantastic. We'll we'll put that uh, on the link in in uh, you know as part of this um, podcast going out. Um, Thank you. How do you balance work and family? I believe you've got six kids. <laughs> my whole body just shook. Like, oh my god! I've six. only got one. So yes, I'm here. <laughs> you've got six times the amount. Oh, wow! <laughs> Amazing. Well, it's a, a very good question. And um, when I get when I get asked that, I always say that working moms don't balance. 
You know, there's no scale that we're balancing all the time. I don't think that's a realistic expectation of mums to be balancing all the time. There are times where the scales are straight and there are times where you're giving your home more and there are times where you're giving your um uh, more more time into your job, like at audit, or, uh, audit time or emergency relief as we're doing at the moment or um, or when you've got a, a sick child, you've got to put a couple of things on pause at work so you can actually um, attend, you know, your priorities change and you try and uh, juggle. Mm. And there are times where you have to put, so not all the balls are in the air. Mm. There are times where you've got a couple, put a couple of them down while you take a breath, a, a breath, and you know to move forward. So um, um, the other thing I try to do as well is I um, the the place at CSS is very homey. So <clears throat> it's something. It's it's a place where it's very child friendly, and I bring them along um, with me. They help out with um, distributing the food. Um, and when they need a break, they can sit down to study. There's a, there's a you know, there's computers and there's, um, I, I set it up that way on purpose for people to come and chill out and to feel that that's a safe space for them. So we get people like that all the time who we just come in and have a cuppa or just to, to do a little bit of art or just to say hello and talk to someone. It could be their only safe space. Um, someone who's struggling with domestic violence or someone who can't have a student who doesn't have time to uh, the, uh, a pleasant family environment to study, whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I don't know where I stopped, but. That's okay. You know, I'll just ask a it's question. It's very homey. It's a very homey space and very welcoming. So um, it keeps, my kids can come and, and stay with me. Uh, while they do their homework or they they chill out or they're helping someone else to you know with with a hamper or helping someone else with their homework so it's it's i i'm able to do that for that reason i'm able to balance if you want to say or uh, juggle all these things at the same time because it's a very homey environment and um uh, and as i said like there's no working mum is balancing 100% of the time you know, the scales are not always like that. Yeah, it's a truly unrealistic expectation that we put on ourselves. And like, I'm guilty of that as well. And I agree with you, it's never balanced. There's always one side that's more heavily weighted than the other. Um, but what I love is that you've truly created a village environment and, um, you know, welcoming others into your family. Do you have much family here in Australia as well? Yeah, I was born and raised here. Um, I, I've got my siblings and my mother uh, in Australia. Um, I don't have uncles or aunties or anything, but um, uh, what I'm trying to revive uh, amongst all the uh, different cultures, like for instance, now we've got a, a wonderful group of volunteers and I, I can't speak high, high enough about, about their hard work and effort and their dedication. Uh, really, um, I can't do it without them. CSS would not exist without them. Um, and they come from all different cultures and, and different uh, nationalities, Italian, Serbian, uh, Indian, Australian, uh, and other Aussie, uh, Lebanese. Um, so these six or seven people have been continuously supporting us day in, day out with putting in the hampers and uh, carrying them up up those hideous stairs and doing all that hard work with us every day to serve people, um, and if I didn't have them, I don't know what I what I would do. But each one of them, uh, you know, works from the heart, and we have created a multicultural village and broken down the ba barriers, and that in itself is uh, phenomenal. Uh, I think we cannot live without volunteers. I think I could say the same here at uh, our, our new online media platform, Dawncast, as well as the Sway Initiative. It's all run from um, people who really want to contribute back and to you know, give mm -hmm. something back to society and, and giving their time. So it's just amazing how much of this kind of work, what you're doing, what we're trying to do is really 
off the back of a lot of volunteers. Um, so, you know, I, I'll, I'll probably take this opportunity as well just to thank all of the volunteers that work with us as well here on Dawncast and, and through the Sway initiative that we have out in southwest Sydney. So, absolutely. Um, just a last question. Um, you, you, you were saying that you've got a space that you've set up. Um, obviously, is that a renter space? Because that's going to impact, you know, businesses who who renting as well from landlords. And how do you negotiate through the COVID-19 now with, you know, not having a proper re- stream of revenue coming in and paying the rent? And how do you manage that with landlords if you are actually at the moment renting that space? We are renting and uh, we've written to our landlord asking um, for some kind of... Um, uh, negotiation. Uh, we haven't heard back from them yet, but we are renting um, from an agent, so it's not from the council. So it, it is quite um, a, an ex- expensive amount that we're paying per month. But we've got to wait and see what they uh, what they say back to us. Um, but uh, look, at the end of the day, we are trying to. We couldn't turn our backs and close down or. Um, at a time where we're serving clients that will become more vulnerable. They're already vulnerable. And through this time, they will become more vulnerable financially and emotionally. Um, and they, you know, those who, who, who are, I think mental illnesses are going to go up, um, uh, skyrocket at the moment with what's happening. Even people who are well, you know, are yeah. panicking and, um, so it, it is a difficult time for, for many, especially for the elderly who can't leave, people who've got um, are carers of uh, people with this mental or physical disabilities. Uh, you know, ha- they don't have respite now, you know, so their mental health is jeopardised and they can't leave their, their loved ones at home. Like they can't leave them out and, and, and go and do the shopping. And hence why we're trying to, we're reaching out to other volunteers who can um um, help us with our social media and marketing. Um, uh, someone who's IT savvy or admin savvy who can coordinate between the volunteers and volunteering like a, a system where the clients, um, the, the database of our clients and the timing uh, of deliveries, so coordinating both of them and the logistics of all of, all of it uh, while keeping the safety um, uh, of the volunteers that are delivering as the as a priority and abiding by uh, the current rules that, that the government has put. Um, so we, we really need someone to help us with that infrastructure because it's quite challenging. It's just hit us at once and we're trying to uh, continue the operation <clears throat> while we're still serving the people as, as best as we can. Um, so... If anyone's got boxes uh, or contacts with someone who packages pop boxes, empty boxes, so we can uh, start uh, packing non-perishable items as well in addition to the um, the produce and the bread that we have on a regular basis. Uh, takeaway containers, anyone who wants to help us out with printing costs or they have a printing business where we can put the, la- uh, the labels on the boxes as well. Um, and the truck. Uh, so if anyone's got a refrigerated truck or a van uh, and they're willing to um, to help us just with, with delivery a couple of hours, um, again, like volunteers, depending on volunteers to do deliveries, and this is, this is phenomenal, you know, when someone, even when we've got a client who's able to come and pick up and we know that they live, say, in the Greenacre area, we're able to give them a couple of other boxes to leave it at the door, non-contact, of course, um, to deliver on their way. Mm-hmm. So if each of the volunteers, not all of them drive, but when we find someone who does drive and is able, who lives in different, different um, demographic areas, we're able to... Um, uh, uh, you not use the volunteers, but uh, were able to utilize the fact that they're going in that direction and pass on um, these these uh, hampers to other families without uh, having to uh, reach out elsewhere or ha- without having to resort to a driver uh, and to be able to do that. So, but we're looking forward 
Um, it, this, this is going to be a short-term solution, I would say two to three weeks, until we move forward um, to that other alternative that we're, we're discussing through a cool room and through a different kind of space where um, we're still abiding by the rules, but we have extra volunteers and we have a cool room and we have a better capacity um, uh, uh, at uh, putting these hampers together to serve the community. Um, thank you very much, Mona. Well, we'll hope that um, our this this podcast will be able to generate some of those volunteers to reach out to support what you're doing. Um, it is very challenging times, and I just you know we hope that you are also looking after yourself, um, you know your well being. Um, and uh, I know you know you've got <laughs> my voice. My voice is not great. I've lost my broadcasting voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's still very broadcastable, don't worry. It's a great voice. It's a great voice there. <laughs> so how can people reach you again? Thank you for inviting me. I, um, I, take, you know, I take this opportunity to, to say to thank you. And I've heard uh, a couple of the podcasts that you've already um, recorded. And I think this uh, is an amazing um, platform. And, uh, and I know the... Um, the effort that goes into podcasts. I used to run something uh, about a month, uh, a year or two ago. Yeah. Uh, but uh, through just a, a humble plot podcast called the Village Radio Program, I didn't edit. I just went there and I interviewed and and just spoke. Uh, no time for editing. <laughs> no time. For, <laughs> just. Raw and authentic. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the way people want it these days. Yeah, just raw. Mm. Um, but it is it, it is a, a lot of effort to put in to, to uh, produce content that's really credible and that's also calming and informing and insightful. And that's what we aimed yeah. to, to do. Um, and so thank you for sharing your story. And we hope that uh, we will be able to get uh, some traction for you. Um, and I suppose uh, um, fingers crossed that the the Sway um, initiative uh, can connect you with the cool room that you need for the, you know, in in, in the next few weeks, and and I, I'm sure that we will try and and mobilize something for you. Thank well, you very much for your invite, and uh, I hope you're all keeping safe, and you. Uh, you know, wishing you a a very successful podcast for the future. Thank, thank you, you and all the best to you as well. So everyone, that was much. Mona Mohammed. Thank you so much for coming in. If you've got a story to share, just let us know. Or if you know someone that has an inspiring story to tell, let us know. And don't forget to subscribe to us. See you. I'm Dai Lee. And I'm Kathy Ngo. See you later. Bye. Bye.